In this video, I'm going to introduce this yet new another generative AI tool called as Quiver. With Quiver, you can chat with any document of format PDF, CSV, TXT, and few others. What Quiver does is that you install it locally, whether in your Linux system or notebook, and then you can access the metadata through a cloud database called as Superbase. In this video, I'm going to share some of the steps which you can use from the repo which is shown on your screen to create this locally. But one heads up, you would still be using a cloud database which is Superbase, which is um, an open source alternative to the Firebase. But you don't have to learn or be much aware of the Superbase except creating a free account there, which I'll show you shortly. Okay, so let's get started. For this tutorial, I am using AWS SageMaker Notebook instance, and I already have created it. If you don't know how to create it, I have another video to which link is in video description, which you can use to create it. It's very simple. After creating it, I have launched a Linux terminal, which is based on Amazon Linux 2. And the instance type I'm using is G4DN large, which has one NVIDIA GPU card. Okay, let's get started now. So if I go back to this repo, there are a few of the steps which they have given. And as usual, uh, with these open source tools, there are a lot of typos here. So I'll be showing you what to fix in these installation steps. Okay, so one uh, thing is that they also have a YouTube video, but I have found that it's very short and doesn't really go into much detail. Uh, and uh, I'm not undermining the efforts and the work done by the developers. Uh, huge kudos to them wonderful work they have done here but i believe that the uh, installation steps and uh, other prerequisites could be more clearer but as it is a project in evolution so i'm hoping it will get better anyway so the first step we need to do here is is which is not mentioned here properly is to make sure that docker and docker compose is installed and running there are a lot of tutorials on web where you can see how to install Docker and Docker Compose. Now, if you want to check if that is installed already in your environment, which is the case in my AWS Sage, uh, Sage Maker Notebook, all you need to do is to first write Docker dash dash version. If it returns a version, it is installed. Similarly, check for Docker dash Compose. Let's wait. If it returns a version, then it is installed. Yes, it is installed, which is correct. Now, second step we need to do as per the repo of this tool is to clone this repository. And if you don't want to copy this uh, URL, you can go up here and then click here on code and then copy this URL from here. Once you copy it, go back to your notebook and get clone URL and then CD to this directory. Press enter. Now it is cloning here and it should be already in that directory. So as you can see, I am in the pivot directory, just ls, just to check what inside. So we have a few of the files like Docker Compose and stuff. Good. Okay, now come back to that repository to see what is the next step. Okay, so it talks about some of the helpers and all that stuff. Just forget it, you don't need to do it. Next up you need to do, after you have checked that your Docker Compose and Docker installed and cloning the repository, go to Superbase website. And the URL is superbase.com and I will definitely post the link in video's description. And right now I am logged in there. If this is your first time with Superbase, make sure that you have um, uh, you, uh, you have signed up and then create a free account. Okay, once that's done, you, all you need to do is to go to settings. On the left hand side, there's a cog button. Click here. And then once you're in settings, you will see a lot of settings. If this is again first time, it will ask you to create your first project. So create, just click on create new project. Let me show you actually how to do it. If I could find that uh, screen. Give me a sec. Okay, so. Let me go back there and click on the, there you go. So click on new project here. 
and then from here I'll just select my organization which is my general email so all you need to do is to give the project name here you can just give any name I already have one and then uh, click here to give it a password it's better to use a generate a password once the password is generated like this then copy it from here and save it somewhere on your notepad or somewhere and then just cl click on create new project so that's all you need to do I'm cancelling because I already have this project and I'm going into that project now here what you need to do is to again go to settings in project settings on the left hand side click here then go to API here now on the left okay now so just remember these values we have project URL we need to copy this and then few other API keys and I will show you what to do okay so now go back to that repo after creating the project now run these two commands in your environment so let me run them in my note um, Jupyter notebook cp backend and then cp frontend okay, so the both the files have been copied now we have a backend in it and a frontend and we need to make changes to both of these files okay now for that matter first you need to do is to let's make changes in the uh, backend file if you ls-ltr we have a backend folder and a frontend folder so first let's go to backend one cd here and if you do lsla this should be a dot env file there you go now use vi editor vi dot env it's a hidden file so make sure you use ls-la to see it now click enter it will open this file in the vi editor now press i small i and it will convert into into the insert mode so there are a few things which we need to change here the first one is superbase underscore url in this file go back to superbase website here you can see that this is a project url click on copy button it is copied go back to your notebook and here you already have in the insert mode so delete this chain me and paste your superbase url here okay second thing we need to do is to replace this open api key if you don't have it already go to open ai website and i will also paste the link to it the url is platform.openai.com account api keys and then generate a new key and then paste it here i already have it so let me grab it and paste it here okay so i'm going to paste my open ai api key which i already have grabbed and I can rotate it after this video. So this is done. Third thing which I need to grab is this Java um, JSON web token. And again, go back to Super Base website. From here, just scroll down a little and you see this JWT secret. And then just click on reveal and then copy. It is copied. Go back here. Now just replace this. Change me with this JWT secret key. There you go. Now we have replaced the open AAP key, JWT secret key, and also this HTTP uh, URL. Also, we need to replace this Superbase service key. So go back to your Superbase and then go up a little. And you, there you see uh, this and then public one and also the service role. for superbase service key in the project api keys section go to this nn public and then the thing which starts with ey copy it go back to your notebook and in this file go to superbase service key line and replace it with the change me paste here that's good okay that's all we need to do here now we can check in the subsequent videos but um, how can we use this google application credential with vertex j and stuff but i'm not going to do it right now and also we are using this um, model which is gpt for all uh, groovy pin so just leave it as this now escape and then colon wq to save it
that's nice okay so this is our uh, backend now cd dash dash to go back and then now change it in the front end cd front end and then vi.env to open the front end file here again we need to change a couple of things which include this uh, public superbase uh, url so let me change it just give me a sec i will grab it uh, go back to the superbase then this is the project url just uh, copy it here okay first i'm going to grab this project url from again from the same location settings and api go back to your notebook and then go to this uh, super base url delete this change me and replace it with that url there you go now the second thing we need to change is this nn key so i am going to just remove this from here and then i'm going back to my super base from here this nn public the thing which starts with ey copy go back and paste it here so that's it that's it uh, that's all we need to do just click escape and then wq that's nice okay so we have changed both of front and back end environment variables which is nice now one more thing we need to do here is to prepare the database in superbase as i mentioned earlier it is not local you have to go to the cloud database I think uh, the developers of this tool mentioned that in the future they are going to um, give the option of having some other vector database locally, but that's not the case as of now. Anyway, so in order to prepare the Superbase database, you need to uh, run some scripts on the Superbase side. So I already have done it, so I'll show you how I did it. So on the left hand side, go to there's a home button and then table editor and then SQL editor. Go to SQL editor. In this SQL editor, on the left hand side, it will there's a button called as new query. Click on it and then new blank query. And it will show you this text box. Okay. Now in this text box, you need to run some SQL scripts provide uh, mentioned in this GitHub repo. So for those script to grab those scripts, go up and then there will be a script folder this one click here and then it will take to the next page now once there you can see there are a lot of scripts there you don't have to worry about the rest of them just click on tables.sql now copy everything from here this is all the table structure once you copy everything let me copy it. Okay, so I copied it, go back to super base website, and then in this editor, just paste. Once you paste it here, then on the right hand side, click on run button and it will run it. If it doesn't give you any error, you're all good. And once it is completed, which takes a few seconds, go to table editor and you should see a couple of tables. So they're not here yet. So go back to SQL editor and I will let me go back because okay so as you can see on the left hand side um, these are the 11 tables which i created earlier once you would run this in sql editor you will also see these tables okay so that's all you need to do in the superbase that is cool now go back to that repository and look at the next steps okay so we have also created the variables and we have created a table so that so that's done now next step we need to do is to run the docker compose for docker compose you should have this docker compose dot yaml file as you can see on your screen now if you look at this command there's a typo here there should be a dash between docker dash docker com docker and compose word because we are running docker compose utility and this should be run on the root folder anyway so grab this command Go back to your notebook and then just make sorry let me I'll just okay just ls to make sure you are on the 
root folder i don't think so i'm under root so cd is here and then again ls there you go you can see that you are at the docker compose and this is my root folder of quiver directory okay just paste that command which we obtained from the uh, that github repository now just make sure that this is docker dash compose once that's done run this command and once you run it it will start building this and it takes around i have seen that on my this uh, instance running first time it takes around 20 to 25 minutes but the subsequent runs are very fast because we already have installed a lot of layers so let's wait for it to finish Okay, so it took around 25 to 30 minutes to finish from start to end after Docker Compose. And now, as you can see, it has uh, the application startup is complete now and it is running on my local host 3000. So, let me first show you the demo which they have on their website. So, if you look at this, so this is in the GitHub repo, uh, the open source one. Let me play it a bit where you can see how to uh, use this uh, quiver. So all you need to do is to select your file and then it's a text file click on add button and then it will add it and then you can simply start chatting with it and brain is simply simply means that uh, you are selecting a new brain so for different documents, for different use cases, you can have different brains within this quiver. You can do some temperature settings and token setting and all that stuff. And I will also paste the link to this uh, GitHub repo and video, uh, which is great. So you can also just watch it. So it's also there in their GitHub repository. Okay. So now um, let's see our thing. It is still running, which is great. So that's it. I hope that you liked it. Um, as you can see, this is still work in progress and there are a lot of things which needs to be ironed out to make it as smooth as possible. But given the whole complexity around these large language model, I believe that still this is quite a groundbreaking project. And I'm more than sure that this will be evolving more and more. If you have played around with it and if you know any better way, then please put it in the comment section. Thank you very much. And uh, if you like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.